morning. Good morning. Um, so we're going to talk for a little while. I think I, what, where is, where she go? How much time do I have? 15 minutes? 20 minutes? 10 minutes? 5 minutes? 15, 20. 20. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, thank the host and the organization for doing this. It's very nice. So everybody should say thank you. Thank you. Applaud the speakers. They did a fantastic job. And the panelists and the law school reps who are here, applaud them as well. Clap. Most importantly, applaud yourselves. Clap. Now, I wanna, I'm going to talk for about 15 minutes. And I was told to keep it very um, real. I don't think they meant to tell me that, because I sometimes keep it too real. But I'm going to do that anyway. So uh, I came yesterday as well because I wanted to hear the other speakers, because I like hearing speakers talk, and I like getting something from everybody. I really like the cake story. That was good. I like the cake story. Although my son would kill that cream by itself. <laughs> my eight-year-old son would kill it. Um, and this whole HU thing, where'd you go? Stop. Thank you. Stop. It's Howard or nothing. Stop. That, 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 I, but she don't say it in my house. Stop. Stop. Just get that clear. It's Howard is the real HU, not Hampton, all that stuff. So it's just stop. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. OK. All right. So we, um, I want you all to um, just sit back and think about something for a second. All of you all here are, most of you all here are from HBCUs. And it's a, it's a fantastic experience. As they said, I went to St. August first. It's a very small school in Raleigh, North Carolina. I think it had, at that time, 1,700 students. Um, very small. And like uh, the speaker before me said, sometimes the small schools get caught up or lost in this large labyrinth of universities. We just don't get the consideration that we should. And sometimes students think they're less than because they went to a smaller school. You're not. Be clear about that. You are not less than. You are greater than or you are better, in my humble opinion. Now, I say that because I'm from uh, Liberty City, Miami, and uh, also from the South Bronx. So, <laughs> so you know, and then I went to St. Augustine's College. So when I went to college, coming from the South Bronx and Liberty City, people thought that, well, you know, you're not supposed to make it. Back in the 1980s, when I was in Liberty City, it was bad. It was rough. It was the roughest, what they say in the country. South Bronx in the 70s and 80s was also bad. It was rough. Not to mention, I went to Miami Northwestern Senior High School which was, from what I understood back then, 1980s, one of the worst high schools in the state of Florida, if not the East Coast. So I wasn't supposed to make it. That was just it. But I did. And so I'm, the first thing I want to tell all of you all is, you're here. If I can make it, anybody can. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And I want you all to make sure you understand that. So whatever school you go to, whatever neighborhood you're from, Whatever you've been through, whatever they've told you, anything they've told you, don't believe it. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. I promise you. Because if I can do it, anyone can. Now, we talked a lot about what, um, what you have to do to get to law school. And again, we're going to try to keep this as real as possible. I took the LSAT three times. Three times I took it, and I'll tell you why later on, but I took it three times. But I didn't let that stop me, because as uh, she said before me, I do own my own law firm. I do have 10 lawyers that work for me. I do practice law in New York City, Chicago, Florida, Atlanta, Arkansas, California. I've been all over the place practicing law. I do represent uh, athletes, entertainers, politicians. I advise elected officials. I have immediate access to governors, senators, former presidents. I help make judges. I'm at the seat of the table in New York City, but I'm a Liberty City boy. I'm a South Bronx boy. Through and through, that's what I am. So I'm, I'm, I'm from the hood, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm proud of it. So anybody can make it. Don't let them tell you you can't. 
Now, I also do some kind of crazy cases that people say I shouldn't take. When I left Miami and I went to law school, and I went to law school, I went back to the South Bronx to be a prosecutor. I actually remember prosecuting and seeing friends from my old neighborhood in the court while I'm prosecuting. It was a weird thing. I'm prosecuting somebody, and I look it over to my right. I'm like, yo, Tracy, what are you doing here? X, what you doing here? Do they know who you are? Yeah, man, don't tell anybody. You know, um, <laughs> it was that kind of thing. You know, people start realizing, wait a minute, dude, you, where are you from? You prosecuting? Yeah, yeah I am. Um, so, but you can do that. And so what I did was, the reason why I started prosecuting, because I wanted to figure out how to be a good defense attorney. And the best way to do that is to be a prosecutor first. So I prosecuted for five years, and then I became a defense attorney. When I started prosecuting, my friend said, yo, dude, you're on the dark side. You're putting brothers in jail. I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm putting a lot of brothers in jail. But unfortunately, those brothers are doing bad things to brothers. So I was prosecuting. But then when I left the DA's office and became a defense attorney, the DA's office friend said, yo, dude, you go on the dark side. So when I was a prosecutor, I was on the dark side. When I became a defense attorney, I was on the dark side. So that told me, ain't no damn sides, no dark sides. Y'all need to calm down. It's one side, the side that you're on at that time. Do the best you can where you are. That's the side you're on. Now, when we talk about law school, and I'm going to talk about myself a lot, but I want to talk about you too. When we talk about law school, real talk, and I think she said it best, what do you need to do to get in law school? Don't get mad at me. I'm going to say it. Don't get mad at me. You need grades. I don't care what anybody else tells you. I don't care how much they tell you. I was also on the admissions committee for Howard for a while. You need grades. That's it. You need grades, and you need, the, need those test scores. You need those, too. If you don't have good grades, and you don't have a good test score, then I'm going to hate to be the one to tell you this. You're going to have serious problems getting to law school. That's just it. Now we can take the LSAT and the GRE, actually. We haven't mentioned that enough, but you can take the LSAT and the GRE to get in some schools. So you need good grades on that LSAT and GRE, and you need good grades in college. You have to have that. If you don't have that, if you're a junior or a sophomore or freshman right now, I'm not supposed to curse, right? I didn't hear that. Okay. I did curse? Oh, if you don't have good, if you don't have good grades right now and you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, go get some good grades. Figure it out. I need you to have good grades. And I need you to study for that LSAT. Now, I seldom get back to it. I took the LSAT three times. Why? Because when I was in high college, I had good grades. I had a 3.0. in my freshman year, 3.8 my sophomore year. 3.9 my junior year, and a 4.0 my senior year. This was while I was running track. Now, those are good grades. And honestly, I didn't feel challenged to get those grades. So, you know, that goes to your head. Some of you guys here got these good grades, and you're smart, and you think you're smart, and you say, well, you know what? you like me when I left college. I ain't got to pass the study for no dog on LSAT. I make good grades. I took standardized tests all my life. I always got good grades. That's why I was in those crazy honor courses in junior high school and high school. So I'm good on standardized tests. So came time to graduate from St. Aug. I think I got good grades. I want to go to law school. I want to go to Duke, because Duke is all that nonsense they kept saying. So I wanted to go to Duke like an idiot. And then I went to take the LSAT. And those grades came back. <laughs> And that grade looked real bad. I'm like, whoa, whoa, this must be a mistake. I call the people up. Y'all got this wrong. I don't get grades like that on, on standardized tests. What are you doing? No, sir, you got this bad grade, and you suck. I'm like, <laughs> wow, OK. So my little arrogant behind started coming down a little bit. I said, it must have been a test. So I went and took the test again a few months later. Didn't study again. It must have been a test. Walked in there again, took the test, walked out feeling good. Grades came back one point higher. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? 
I, I don't get bad grades. How I get one point higher on this test? I'm supposedly good. No, it didn't work. So I look at my brother, my older brother. He goes, did you take a class? I'm like, what class? Goes, what do you mean class? <laughs> he goes, did you take Kaplan? I go, what's that? And he goes, idiot, what's wrong with you? You stupid? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, okay. I then go take the class. I didn't have any money for the class. So what did I do? I got me a pen, got me a piece of paper, wrote me one of those letters to Kaplan saying, I'm a poor man from Liberty City. I really want to go to law school. I can't afford this test, this class. Please help me, Kaplan. They waived it. They waived the cost of it. I was like, yes. <laughs> then I took the class. I studied at class. I took lots of practice tests. And then I started realizing something. Oh, this is some cheating stuff here. Oh, y'all been keeping us from us. This is a trick. So wait a minute. So if I take this class and take all these practice tests, and the teacher's telling me, listen, these questions are probably going to be similar to the test. I'm like, really? He goes, yes. I'm like, taking the test, taking the test, taking the test, studying, take the dog on LSAT, and I'm scored jumped up about 15 points, maybe 16 points, 17 points. I'm like, wait a minute, that's cheating. That's really cheating. So all I had to do was take these classes, study, take these practice tests, and then I'm going to get a high school for LSAT and go to law school? Yes. So, like was said earlier, LSAT grades, Grades, you're in school. LSAT, please take a class. Take practice tests. The way you score high on the LSAT is practice test, practice test, practice test, practice test. It's not about how smart you are. It's about how much you prepare, like life. It's about how much you prepare. You prepare intelligently, you will do well on the test. It's very simple, and it's not hard. So do that, please, for us, because as she said, we need you all in law school. We need you bad. I need you bad in law school. I have one of the largest minority law firms on the East Coast. It's only 10 of us. That sounds crazy. Law firms have thousands of lawyers. It's 10 of us in my law firm, and we're one of the biggest. That's crazy. I don't think you have a big one in Atlanta, and this is Chocolate City. That's crazy. So I'm suggesting to you all, we need you all in law school, badly. Now, someone asked me earlier, from, I think from Oakwood College, asked me yesterday, what would I tell my 20-year-old self today if I looked at myself in the, something, it was a good question, if I looked at myself in the mirror and saw my 20-year-old self, what would I tell myself? Good question. First thing I would tell myself, read more. Read more. Read something. Not just classwork, read. There's an article that came out about a month ago, said the richest people in the world do something that most people don't do. They read an hour a day. It's called the five hour a week rule. Again, it's a secret. They don't tell you this stuff. Uh, you gotta know it, you just gotta, I'm telling you, it's a secret, you gotta know it. You have to read more. You read more, you will be successful. If I knew that when I was 20 years old, I would have read more books. Read. Read, read. It helps your vocabulary. It helps you write. It helps your intelligence. It helps everything. And some of you all want to go out into the world and be with smart, smart people. That's fine. But guess what? When you get out there, those people have been reading a lot. So to this day, I'm still playing catch up. I'm still trying to catch up with all the people that read so doggone much. You got to read, folks. The next thing I would tell myself, travel more. When I say travel, I don't mean travel internationally. If you can, do that. But travel somewhere. Go somewhere. I don't care if you're from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, go to Chicago, go to Kansas, go to Cal do something. Get on the bus, go somewhere. Travel. Learn more. You learn by traveling. That's what I would tell myself. I would tell myself again, study for that LSAT, because that was just crazy. I would say, yo, bro, study for the LSAT. Take some tests. What's wrong with you? Stupid? Study. You ain't that smart. Study. I would tell myself that. I would also tell myself, have some fun. 
have some responsible fun. You got a long life to live. You become lawyers, you're going to work hard. Believe me. Have some fun. Whatever you're doing now, have fun. That's what I tell myself. A few more things, and I'm going to sit down. Your personal statement. I keep hearing about this personal statement, personal statement, personal statement. It's important. Personal statement. It's important. Yes, it's important. But the problem is, the question is, what do you put in it? It's like some, I don't know, some nuclear question, something. People get confused about it. What do you put in a personal statement? Well, it tells you. It's a personal statement. Personal. What makes you special? And sometimes I don't think we think about that enough about ourselves. What makes you special? Why would a law school want to have you as a student? What is your story? And if you didn't hear anything else or recall anything else from any other speaker, all of them had good stories. I mean, like, great stories. Someone talked yesterday about, I think it was Joy, talked about her being pregnant, being a 2L, and going through it and keep going. That is a great story. When I was hearing it, I knew where she was going with that. Because if a young African-American woman is in her second year of law school at that law school and gets pregnant and continues through law school and works at a big law firm, that shows determination, grit, I don't care, I'm succeeding. Lawyers like that. That's a story. The other young man talked about how he was, had a job before that, and he was traveling around the country doing all this stuff for his job, and went back to go to law school, and somebody said, well, we all want to go to law school. He was like, challenge, challenge on. That's a good story. I had a similar story when I left St. Aug. I went back to Miami to teach at my high school for a year to try to study for this LSAT that I should have did the year before that. I keep going back to that, study for the LSAT. You know, and I get back to my high school, I'm teaching, and I remember her name. I should call it on a record, but I think she lives in Georgia. She's an old teacher of mine, chemistry teacher. You know what I'm talking about, Miss McIntyre, if you're listening. I was teaching at my old high school, and I was sitting in the room, and I said, to, I said I'm studying for the LSAT because I want to go to law school. She looked at me and said, X, we all want to go back to law school. You're going to be right here with us in 10 more years, just like the rest of us. This is my teacher from high school. She was still in high school. So I looked at her and said, mm-hmm. I'll see you in about three years. So three years later, after I graduated from, from Howard, I came back. What's up, Ms. Mack? Check that degree out right there. And then I'm out. You got to have a story. Say something about yourself. What distinguishes you from somebody else? This might come close to home, and again, don't get mad at me. But some of you all here are from the same college. I get it. Some of you are from different colleges. I get it. This is the question. It's a very serious question. If you're a junior at St. Aug, and you're a junior at Spelman, or better one, you're a senior at St. Aug, and you're a senior at Spelman, you're applying to Harvard. You're applying to Harvard. What distinguishes you from her? We got to start thinking like that. You have to distinguish yourself. And let's take it a step further. You a senior at Spelman. You got a senior at Emory right here, another African-American woman. She wants to go to Harvard as well. Both of y'all got 3.8 grade point averages. Uh-oh. Both of y'all scored 165 on the LSAT. Now what's going to distinguish you? I'm sitting as the admissions committee. I got a senior from Spelman, a senior from Emory. Both got 3.8s. Both got 168s on the LSAT. What's distinguishing you? That's your goal, folks. Your goal is to distinguish yourself. Another story I have. I'm an alpha. I said it proud. I'm, I'm an alpha. I'm a man of alpha, I, 100%. But when I was at St. Aug, true story, I went to the smoker, and I went in as a senior, and they was like, well, why do you think Alpha wants you? Well, what makes you think Alpha wants you? I put my hand up. Hold up, bro. I don't need you. You need me. That's what I said. And the dude, the, the brothers up there front was like, whoa, whoa, who you think you are? Man, you, you, we don't need you. We Alpha Phi Alpha. I get it. 
But Alpha Phi Alpha is an organization of distinguished gentlemen. I told him, listen, bro, I want to be the distinguished Alpha. What do you mean by that? You all are distinguished. I want to be a man of distinction amongst the distinguished. That's my goal. That's my goal. And that's what it is. So that's why I know you want me. Because you want me to help your organization be more distinguished than it is, which I'm going to do. So I live by that rule. I distinguish, I try my best to distinguish myself with my actions. Absolutely. And if you do that, if you do that as a goal, you will be successful. If you remember that you have to distinguish yourself from other people at all times, you will be successful. When you're trying to get a job, when you go on an interview and you want that job, what makes you better than the other person? That's what law schools are going to ask themselves when they're sitting down at the admissions room. They're going to say, well, why should I give her the chair or him the chair instead of that person? How is that person going to make my law school better than that person? So when you're writing your personal statements, think about that. What distinguishes you? What story can you tell? What makes you the person that that law school wants to be a graduate of their law school? I didn't realize till last week that I'm on a United Negro College Fund Hall of Fame wall in Atlanta somewhere. Someone told me that. I'm a United Negro College Fund recipient. I had no idea they had a Hall of Fame wall, but it sounded good. Because you want to distinguish yourselves. And it's not bragging. It's not. You all have already started the steps. You're in college. You don't know this, but that's distinguishing. Believe me, because there's more not in college than there are in college. So you are starting the steps to do that. Now the question is, how do you continue? Because we do need you as African-American attorneys. What makes you better? What makes you better? And I don't mean going to rooms and snatching out pages and trying to do unfair competition, which you're going to see in law schools. I don't mean that. Don't do that. I just simply mean, what can you do to make yourself a better person than you are? That's all it means. Keep striving to do that, and I assure you, you will get in law school if you have the grades and if you do well in the LSAT. Those things are ingredients for the cake. <laughs> That's a good example. I like that. Now, when I say what should you do, charity work. That's fine. I know someone said earlier, don't do all those other things that make you, that, that are additional. I agree and respectfully a little bit disagree because there is going to be a situation, there's going to be a time when you're going to have to have something different than the other person. And I'm, I firmly believe that. There's going to be a time, like when I'm interviewing every year for internships at my firm, I have to make tough decisions. I have to look at somebody and say, okay, well, she has a great, she's doing great in law school, he's doing great in law school, he has, a, he's worked, he's worked, he's in a fraternity, he's in, she's in a sorority. I mean, they're both excellent. Now you gotta make a decision. Something else needs to be there. And I'm suggesting we need that. There's only a certain amount of spots in law school. If all of you all were to, um, this is the reality part, and I'm, I hate to say this to you, but there's only a certain amount of spots in law school classes. There's only a certain amount, so they have to make tough decisions. So I'm going to end with, please, three things. It's, it's called a trilogy. Distinguish yourself. Find some way to distinguish yourself. Be that person of distinction. It's one little uh, anecdote I tell people all the time. When I was in Howard Law School, I left Howard Law School, and I was looking for, trying to get a job, and um, they told me, uh, one of my friends said, well, X, you're in D.C. Jobs everywhere. Why don't you stay here in D.C. and be a big fish in a small pond? I said, I don't want to do that. He said, why not? I said, I want to go to New York. He goes, why is that? I said, because I want to be a big fish in a big pond. 
He goes, what do you mean by that? I said, why well, I want to stay here and be a big fish in a little pond, or I'm going out behind New York and be a big fish in a big pond. And I'm going to come back to D.C. and be a big fish in your, big, your little pond too. That's how I think. That's how I think, and that has helped me because when I got to New York, I told everyone I got to, listen, yes, I'm new, but I'm better than you. I, I know that. I'm, I'm, I'm better than you. And then I, I prepared myself for it. So I want you all to, it sounds crazy, it sounds grandiose, but you can do it. Distinguish yourself. Try to be distinguished. The next thing is be relevant. What does that mean, be relevant? Sounds simple. Be relevant. Being relevant simply means that you are significant or important to the conversation, whatever that may be. And if you focus on that, if you do that, if you distinguish yourself and you try to become relevant or be, be relevant, then you are already now, you're always under consideration, you're always out front, and you're always being considered for whatever is open to you, always. And the last thing is focus. Focus on that goal. If you want to go to law school, focus on how to do it. We told you all you need good grades. If you don't, if you have mediocre grades right now, that's fine. Try to make them better. If, you have, if you're a senior and you got mediocre grades right now, and you know you need a, a better LSAT or GRE score, then focus on that LSAT GRE. But focus on your goals. Distinguish yourself. Be relevant. Focus. And you will be fantastic. Thank you.